brothers and sisters of Christ, we can celebrate two feasts today. We have the first one, the principle of the mass we celebrate is a Franciscan, a great Franciscan, who is the, the personification of a great virtue of meekness. And also today we celebrate as a commemoration the great saint, Saint Catherine of Alexandria. What about Humilis of Bisignano? The feast today, he was born in Calabria in the year 1582. In baptism, he received the name of Luke Anthony. And at a very early age, he gave great evidence of the great love of God, his great meekness in holy things. His parents spared no efforts to give their boy a good training. He obeyed not only their commands, but even their least desires and wishes. He had no interest in the noisy games which held attraction for his friends because he found his delight in prayer and going to church. His confessor was aware of the special gifts given to him at an early age and permitted him then as a youth and very young to receive Holy Communion frequently. As a young man, he spent the time he could spare from his heavy duties in the fields and with the flocks by meditating on the sufferings of Jesus Christ crucified before a crucifix. At the age of 18, when it was necessary to choose a vocation in life, Luke Anthony began to pray fervently for light. He joyfully came to the conclusion he was called to be a lay brother in the Franciscan order, but a cross awaited him directly from the start. The cross awaited him. Obstacles presented themselves and the fulfillment of his cherished desire had to be postponed for quite a time. He did not lose courage, but he began to live the life of a strict and zealous religious even in the world. Nine years later though, passed by before the hindrances were removed. He was now admitted as a lay Franciscan brother at a place called Bisignano in Italy and received a name that fitted him so well, Brother Humilis, that is, the humble one. Blessed Humilis of Bisignano then was a model to his brethren, a devoted client of the Immaculate Virgin Mary. He obtained from her through much prayer and mortification the magnificent virtue of purity to such a degree that he seemed to be an angel in the flesh. But his love of poverty and humility was just as great. He dreaded all honor or distinction accorded to him in his humility and publicly acknowledged himself to be a great sinner. But our Lord, as we know, who exalts the humble and gives wisdom to the simple, gave great supernatural light to Humilis, so that learned men came to him for advice and instruction in their concerns and problems. Illness finally forced Humilis to return to his convent at Bisignano for medical attention. His life was now drawing to a close. He suffered severe pains and dauntless, with dauntless patience until the moment of his death. Crucifix in hand, he fixed his eyes intently on it and entered into celestial joy on November 16th in the year 1637. The remarkable favors which God granted blessed humilis of Bisignano in life and after his death were carefully examined by Pope Pius IX and approved as miraculous. Pope Leo XIII then enrolled him among the blessed. The greatest virtue we can learn from this Franciscan blessed today then is a virtue which is completely misunderstood today in our world. We are talking now of the virtue of meekness, which is perceived today as some kind of effeminate or weak behavior. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we always seek to be like him. Meekness is vital for us to become more Christ-like. 
Without it, we won't be able to develop other important virtues. Being meek does not mean weakness, but it does mean behaving with goodness and kindness, showing strength, serenity, healthy self-worth, and above all, self-control. As we work to develop this attribute, we will find that humbly submitting our will to God the Father brings us the empowerment of God and the power of also humility. Probably the least admired, admired character and quality in the world today then is this meekness. And yet the greatest person who ever lived was a meek and humble man who said, our savior, learn from me for I am meek and humble in heart. Jesus exemplified meekness during his first coming, even as he administered in the power of God. Those who follow him will also demonstrate meekness and gentleness as fruit of a spirit-filled life. We also have some beautiful teachings on this virtue of meekness by St. Francis de Sales, who is a powerhouse of instruction. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the earth. Meekless and mindless of heart is a virtue rarer than chastity, he says. And yet it is more excellent than that of all other virtues, for it is the end of charity, which, as St. Bernard of Clairvoy says, is in its perfection when we are not only patient, but also kind. It is necessary, however, to have great esteem for this virtue and to use it every effort to acquire it. St. Francis de Sales himself had the very highest regard for this virtue. He spoke of it so frequently and with so much love, and to show clearly it was his chosen one among all. So though he excelled himself in all the virtues, he was singular and remarkable in this virtue of meekness. He always wore a serene countenance, and there was a special grace upon his lips, so that he generally appeared to be smiling, and his face breathed a sweetness which charmed everyone. Also today, as we said, we celebrate this magnificent feast of St. Catherine of Alexandria, who is a patron of philosophers. From the 10th century onwards, veneration for the Catherine of Alexandria has been widespread in the Church of the East. And from the time of the Crusades, this saint has been also popular in the West, where many churches have been dedicated to her, and her feast day is kept with great solemnity. Sometimes in the East is a holy day of obligation. She is listed as one of the 14 helpers of mankind among the saints in heaven. She's also not just only the patron saint of philosophers, but preachers, theologians, wheelwrights, millers, and other working men. According to the popular tradition, Catherine was born of a patrician noble family of Alexandria, and from childhood had devoted herself to study. Through her reading, she had learned much of Christianity and had been converted by a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary holding the Holy Child. When the emperor at that time of the East, Maxentius, began his persecution against the Christians, Catherine then stood up in strength. Then a beautiful young girl and with courageous and great fortitude went directly to the emperor himself and scolded him for his cruelty. He could not answer her arguments against his pagan gods. So what did he do? Like the story we read in the Old Testament, when Elijah has the battle against the pagan priest from Baal with the fire and the altar, what did Catherine do this time? The emperor now gathered 50 of his own pagan philosopher priests to confute Catherine. They all confessed themselves, though, won, won over by her reasoning. And thereupon, they, had the, they converted to the Christian faith themselves. They were burned 
and killed by the enraged emperor. And then he tried to seduce Catherine to be the empress with an offer of the consort's crown, which he refused him. And then he began to beat her and she was imprisoned. The emperor went off to inspect, inspect his military forces. And when he got back, he discovered that his very wife, Faustina, had a high and a high official in his court had been to see Catherine and also they had been converted. They too were put to death and at this point Catherine was sentenced to be killed on a spiked wheel. When she was fastened in fact to the wheel, her bonds were miraculously loosened and the wheel itself broke. Its spikes flying off and killing some of the onlookers, she was then beheaded. This is the great martyr of the church, and this is why we have, on, when we have this fireworks, we have one of the fireworks called the, the Catherine Wheel, which comes from this tradition. This is the great saint, and in the text of the Acts of the Illustrious Saint states that her body was carried by the angels to Mount Sinai, where a church and monastery were afterwards built in her honor. This is the great Saint Catherine of Alexandria. We give glory to God for this great saint, the patroness of philosophers, who stood with great courage and fortitude. This is what we need to pray for today, for ourselves, the clergy, to stand up in the face of all of these attacks inside and outside of the church in the world, but to hold with the strength and this great virtue of Blessed Humilis, the grace to be strong and yet at the same time to have the meekness of Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary at the foot of the cross. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.